historically what has been the budget movement, how exactly markets have moved on the budget day. This is how markets and that's how markets have moved essentially on the budget day. February 2017, in terms of market action, February 2000. <clears throat> so the budget day volatility is not very large. It's not very grand. It's anywhere between 1% to about 2.5%. This time around, expectations are low. Volatility is low. Markets are nervous. Mid and small cap traders are on the sidelines. Institutional investors are calling the market. So you may not expect a lot of volatility, a lot of price action. Focus on this last part here. This is the part I want to emphasize again. Over the years, the budget volatility only has got diluted and may just get diluted. Paranjia, good morning. Thank you for joining us. What is on your agenda for the day? Are you planning to just watch ET now and enjoy the budget speech? Or you've got a buying list ready, which you want to use to your advantage when markets fall? Uh, good morning, Nigunj. Uh, I think uh, we are heading for a, a very much better times, I would say, rather than exciting times. Uh, as you rightly told, you know, expectations are very low. And that is the, that is the point. It's very important. I think uh, we are like, you know, uh, in, a, in an extremely risk-averse mode. Not only the market investors, but the industry captains out there. So we are in a real, real risk-averse mode, very low sentiment. So things can only do better. See, I was so impressed with, you know, the chief economic advisor talking about you know, the, the political stability or a strong uh, uh, political leader, it can awaken the animal spirits of the economy. It's very, very important. I think it is time for this. India has created a great foundation, a platform for faster economic growth in the last five years, in the Modi one. And Modi two, it has to really work. And there is, there is no chance that it will not work in this next five years. If we have to target 8% economic growth for the $5 trillion uh, economy by 2025, it is very, very much possible. We all have to work towards that. And that's an exciting news, not to be ignored by the equity investors in this country. I'm very, very uh, optimistic about things going forward in the next five years. Ranjo, if today there was no budget, how exactly would you have approached the market today? Given that budget's importance over the years is only getting diluted and a day from, you know, a week from now, budget would be history and markets would be aligning with global reality and the current uh, earnings trajectory. If today there was no budget, hypothetically, how would you have approached the market and 9.15, what you would have done today? I don't know what would I have done today. The, uh, we are fully invested in the market as a fund manager. Uh, anyway, budget, as you rightly pointed out, the importance, the relevance of uh, budgets are coming down in the last many years, especially after the GST implementation. You know, things are happening outside the budget for the last many years, and it will be more so going forward. So the big picture uh, focus, as it you now has, uh, has taken it up in the last many years ago, and you have been following it up. So investors should be always looking at the uh, big picture, but the kind of collateral damage happened in the markets to an average investor in the country in the last uh, couple of years, especially in the last five quarters, I would say, it was, it was very painful. I'm also uh, one of the victims of that, you know, a, a huge meltdown uh, uh, and beyond imagination uh, in the mid and small cap segment, in the broader market, I would say, even though Sensex and Nifty staying at near to all time high, there is a huge pain a collateral pain of the kind of cleaning up happening in the, in the economy, in the banking system, in the financial markets. So we are going through that pain, but it is all for the good of the future. So that's why I'm, I'm very confident uh, India is going to achieve that $5 trillion economy mark by growing at 8% or more uh, going forward. We have the potential. But the only thing we are lacking confidence now, the sentiment is very low. There is a risk covers mode. All these things can change with the so-called animal spirits of the economy. Right, let's also bring on board Sandeep Savarwal. Sandeep, you know, that's I think the state with everyone when they analyze their portfolio as to where some of the large part of the mid and small caps have gone in the last uh, year, year and a half. What can the budget possibly do to revive and bring the animal spirits back into markets? 
I think a lot of things are already in place because if you look at uh, where the government bond yields are, they are at uh, multi-year lows. Uh, if you look at inflation, that's very much controlled. If you look at the banking system, that's more or less uh, addressed. I think a lot of the issues have been addressed on the ground. Now, I think there are four or five things which the budget can actually uh, practically do, sure. which can impact the market. Otherwise, it will be just... Uh, just on, another day. Yeah. yeah. So, one is on long-term capital gains, if they decide to reduce it to by some extent. So, but that's hoping against yeah, you. So, They're so, not going to roll back on something which so, has been Which implemented. they did last year. So, yeah. it's, uh, it's an unreal expectation. It should True. not be there. But uh, what I'm saying is four or five things that can be done which can have a real impact. Second is uh, set a uh, uh, set a trend for how the corporate tax rates will reduce to 25 percent. Let's say cut one percent this year, one percent cut every year over the next five years. Cut some individual tax rate, reduce the MAT. So I think these are the practical things which they can do, mm. which will which can immediately impact the sentiments. Otherwise, I think there is not much which can be done to immediately impact the sentiments. But I think uh, directionally, things will be better only. You think a stimulus in some form is definitely a given? It, it, uh, if it's not a given, I think it should be done. But I think it's too mm. late for them to do anything. So they must have already decided what they want to do. Yeah. But given the fact that global liquidity is ample, global yields are moving down, Indian bond yields are so low. Uh, this is the inflation is under control. Inflation is under control. This is the ideal time for a fiscal stimulus, contrary to what many uh, economists are saying, because even a 0.3 to 0.5 percent increase in fiscal deficit will not lead to a substantial change in borrowing costs for the government. True. But you need to increase growth to increase revenues to reduce the deficit. With the same uh, amount of economy, the same size of the economy growing very slowly, how will you increase revenues? Revenues, you can't continuously squeeze people to get revenues out. So I think growth revival has to be a priority. Especially with macros currently supportive and intact, the time really is now. Uh, Parinju, you know, given that we're expecting uh, boosts when it come to, comes to the farm sector, housing, some of these pockets, and you're, you are tracking keenly the broader markets, would any uh, particular names or would, uh, you know, a focus there be on some of those sectors on the back of potential stimulus coming in? Uh, I think water is a theme uh, which has been discussed in the discussion in the last uh, few few weeks, especially after a dry spell uh, is seen in the monsoon. Uh, so there are some companies operating uh, in the water segment. Uh, now, one, one company, which uh, I don't know whether I should talk, individual companies, which uh, which is known with my name, is uh, Vietech Wabak. That's a, that's a mid-cap company, which we have got a large holding in our PMS. But the prices are down. It used to be at 500 rupees, came down to some 260, now some 320, 30, whatever. So I'm not asking anybody to go and buy it. But this is one company. It's like uh, there is no other company competing with them right now. It's like in a monopolistic situation. Even though Atlantic has a division for the water solutions, uh, I think they have they are lacking technology in that respect. Here, Wabag has got a global technology and uh, you know reference. So they are strongly placed with a very large, uh, over 10,000 crores kind of uh, order book. Uh, I think India has to, uh, I don't know whether there will be clear budget provisions, but the already government is doing outside the budget many things uh, towards water conservation, etc. But water conservation alone will not help. We need to go beyond that. Even the, you cannot even fully depend on the rainwater also. So the water desalination and reuse of water Reuse or recycling of water is now being made mandatory in many of the segment, industry segments like power, etc. So I think that's that's one segment India has to go a long way in uh, uh, desalination or uh, water the wastewater treatment, drinking water treatment, the water solutions. Uh, so there are many such themes which need not be fully connected with the budget. You know, but when budget comes every time, the rural economy, agri economy, housing, all these names uh, come up. But uh, it is still very relevant. Government is focusing on the housing uh, and the uh, agri and rural segment, uh, the social sectors. So I think there are companies uh, uh, in the now uh, a company like uh, Godrej Agrovet. There are many companies which are focused uh, in the agri and rural economy. Uh, there is a DCM Sriram uh, Industries. There, there are uh, DCM Sriram Limited. There are many such companies. Uh, but all these are in the mid-cap 
and the, they are totally ignored. So I think investors should look for some of the traditional companies also, which are ignored, where there was no capex happening in the last many years due to the slowdown. So, so again, we are heading for another, another capex cycle after 10 years of stagnation. So if keep it in mind, investors can find many themes and many good companies in the mid-cap segment also, uh, which can progress, which can grow very impressively from here. So uh, Mahindra Life is one company. It's in the, I think they're talking uh, much about the low cost housing. The stock is also at very much near the one year low or multi-year lows. Uh, and uh, I have no interest in the Mahindra Life space. Uh, we have a holding in Godrej Agravich in the PMS. I'm just, want, I'm just telling some themes and some companies, but there are many. I find there are scores of good companies in the mid cap and uh, you know large small caps where people, investors can better at this point of time with their five to 10 years in perspective. Okay, Parinju, thanks for uh, giving our viewers those ideas, but stay put with us. We've got the best of minds in the industry. Analyze the budget here with us. Uh, Parinju just talked about and emphasized more on that water theme, exactly what you guys, Nikunj, along with Nilesh, were talking about. And Parinju gave us some of the interesting ideas as well. He said Godridge uh, AgroVet. Uh, he also talked about Vietek Vabag being, being one such stock, which... Uh, could look interesting considering that we've seen the kind of water scarcity prevalent in some of the southern parts of the country and how serious is the government is for tackling this water scarcity. But aside of that, Parinju, tell me what's the farmer you expecting? How do you think the government is going to finally prop up this rural distress that the economy has been marred with? Um, I feel as Nigun was talking earlier, <laughs> I think no bad news is good news uh, in this budget. And uh, there is no big expectations. The sentiment is low. Um, but investors are forgetting very certain important things in such a, uh, you know, a market, down market sentiment. <clears throat> Today, India's market cap uh, to the GDP as a percentage is around 80-85%. Uh, whereas some investors are comparing today's situation before the fall in 2008. I think just before the fall in 2000, the market crash in 2008, uh, India had a market cap of around 140% to the uh, to the GDP. So that way, I think uh, uh, I feel it's a, we have a very low base, and uh, things are really looking up. But if somebody really want to turn negative and pessimistic, there are enough reasons for that. They can talk go on talking about. You know, many, many problems happening today. And most of these negatives and problems and the pain, what we are going through, it is temporary in nature. As we earlier discussed, you know, India as an economy, we have, we have pressed the reset button of the political economy. And we are going through the collateral pain of that. All the problems, the dirts and the frauds, everything is coming out in the corporate world in many segments. So a cleaning up process is going on. And India has implemented some wonderful, uh, you know, reforms, very, very major historic economic reforms, as all of us know, the GST or the, uh, you know, the, the IBC, uh, all those kind of things are very, very important, and they are going to yield results going forward. So I think it, it doesn't make any sense to be bearish uh, or, you know, uh, being... Uh, being low at this point of time because we are talking about doubling of our GDP in the next five, six years' time. And we have the potential, as I told earlier, we have really potential to grow at 8% and sustain that for a few years. Uh, that will make things very comfortable. And uh, see, we have grown in the last five years. We have grown well in spite of all those problems. And we have grown in a low interest environment, low inflation environment. And uh, we have grown adhering to the physical discipline. That is more important. That is why the last five-year growth is very impressive when you consider uh, the background of the growth. And uh, I'm very uh, optimistic about the uh, markets, uh, not because I'm always optimistic, but I think even going by the rationality and you know, the logic, uh, I think market is poised um, for a positive surprise to investing community. 
Okay, just want to mark what exactly the market is up to as well before I take that conversation forward with uh, Purinchu. It's absolutely flat for the Nifty, but I won't really go by that because the headline number is comfortable. We're in fact nudging the 12,000 mark on the Nifty futures already. You're sitting at a level of about 11,990. Three, the breadth, you could say, with a slim margin, albeit, but is favoring the advances. That's the 18 hour green and fair index. Uh, it's pretty much split in the middle. Having said that, it's been a marked improvement from fair just about three days back, and now we're re at a reading of about 53, so not bad at all. Very quickly, what's actually holding up within the broader markets? A GMR infra, 3% higher. ICS Pru is doing very well, about a 2.5% bump up on the futures. Indebulls Housing, Reliance Capital, the beaten down names, they've been propping up as well. You've got an ACC also which is holding up by about 1.6%. Look at what Marico is doing. We've been talking about consumption boost, rural dis distress. Uh, perhaps this is one name which captures both ends of the curve and Marico is holding up 7 tenths of a percent. If we can bring up the intraday chart, you'll get a better sense of how the movement on Marico has been quite steady, holding up quite nicely and the volumes as well are not all that bad. On the flip side though, oil and gas is taking a beating. ONGC, HPCL both down. You've got a Dish TV which is down, Reliance Infra, and yes, Bank continues to be in the red as well. But Nikunj is back in the studios, and Nikunj, you were talking with Nilesh about what would cheer the markets, what would upset them. We have Purinju as well. He's always he's been a perma bull, irrespective of how mid and small caps have been. And he says that water is going to be one theme that the government will talk about this budget. Uh, he's liked Vietec uh, Vabag. He's talked about Godrej Agrovet as to how he thinks those are stocks that one can look at. My only fear with theme based investing has been Aisha. If you take the clock back five years ago, we had a couple of grand slogans made in India, defense, Swachh Bharat. Mm. That ground activity on Swachh Bharat has happened. Ground ac activity on Jandan accounts have happened. Has that translated into a windfall gain for any of the so called housing companies or PSU banks? Maybe not. So the attempt here really could be to fix the water problems in India. But how do you benefit from a market standpoint? I really don't Pani know. Says? No, that's says. I mean, that means Mark, what is says? Maybe a party says, says is coming what I keep soon. On Nilesh, do you think that's going to happen? No. I mean, my submission has been that we are one of the highest tax country in the mm. world. If you look at corporate India on a hundred rupee profit, they pay about thirty-five percent by way of taxes and says that leaves them with sixty-five rupees. Then they declare dividend. Another twenty percent goes by way of dividend distribution tax and says. So out of 65, 20% gone, that's 13 rupees gone. Effectively, you are left with 52 rupees. And if you earn dividend as an individual above 10 lakh rupee, you pay another 11% tax. So out of 100 rupee earned, the promoter, the entrepreneur has about 45 or 47 rupees by way of reinvestment possible. Mm. And then we are saying that why is private investment not picking up? I think time has come where we further reduce our taxes improve our tax collection and focus on raising non-tax revenue. That should be the theme for the budget. But so you think the promised corporate tax cut may actually eventually come out this budget? It has to come at some point of time now, mm. whether it's this budget, next budget. People want a roadmap and adherence to that roadmap rather than immediate delivery. Everyone realizes the compulsion within which India's fiscal situation is. but. Uh, if we create a roadmap and adhere to it, I think that's more than sufficient. You know, minutes from now, we'll also get you what are the cover we are pick picking up. The budget cover. The budget cover, what we've picked up, and Ajay and Nantara, they've been telling us from the morning, I want to revisit the budget cover. Uh, Nilesh, <clears throat> one big achievement of the India one has been that they've managed to keep inflation low. We can pray to gods and we can thank oil for that or, you know, Donald Trump's tweets. But inflation is something which is manageable. When you plan the next five year, or when you plan the last five years, you are accounting, you're, you were conscious of a five, six percent inflation. Now inflation hopefully could remain below three and a half to four percent. How will that change the next five year policy dynamics? Because that is one big assumption which has changed now be between India 1 and India 2. Undoubtedly, this is the biggest achievement for India government where from double digit inflation, we have come to single digit inflation. And slowly it is percolating into inflationary expectation. There was a time when a 10% salary increase was considered normal. And today with inflation coming down, those numbers will start falling towards maybe 4-5%. So effectively we are bringing down inflationary expectations. 
This will open up room on the monetary side where rates can be cut further. This will make our manufacturers competitive. Today, when a small and medium entrepreneur competes with someone in, let's say, Thailand, uh, Thailand's corporate borrowing rate will be 3-4%. In India, it is 13-14%. That 10% interest burden kills us. So effectively, we will see inflation coming down, creating monetary space with which we will be able to become more competitive with the rest of the world. You know, in India, if you look at the basic uh, aspects, which is your land cost, interest cost, labor cost, manufacturing cost, they are one of the highest in the world mm. and exports are suffering. So I guess, you know, whereas we get excited about what will happen to markets today, tomorrow, what will happen to the Nifty, how markets have moved historically and what will happen to markets when they'll open on Monday morning. Uh, this, this is like, you know, for me, I feel this, given the political mandate they have, it's like now or never. You can do so much if you really want to do on the disinvestment front, on fixing some permanent problems. You have to have path-breaking reforms. And if you're able to do those path-breaking reforms, then we can even think of achieving $5 trillion. Mm. Otherwise, this would be a vision, and it will end up just becoming a vision document, which 10 years from now will remain uh, like a vision statement, which has been, it will end up just becoming a vision statement. That's my view. Nilesh, on that Somebody point, if you would want urgently. to just put your phone on mm. silent, perhaps. Uh, but you know, you were talking about uh, earlier in our pre-budget discussions, that it's not just about fiscal deficit, managing, being prudent, about stimulus. It's also as to how the government can try and give that leg up to increasing productivity. Why don't you tell our viewers about how reforms like GST would only aid that move forward? So we were with truck drivers between, uh, you know, one part of Maharashtra on the eastern side to the western side. And most of the truck drivers confirmed that their harassment by various government agents on the road has come down dramatically mm. with GST. We were with transport association people who said that the time taken to move a truck from Chennai to Delhi, from Mumbai to Delhi, has come down by 15 to 20 percent. Now, we can improve it further. Today we have RFID techs at the toll naka, mm. but non-RFID tech cars also go over there. If we can unclog this toll naka with RFID, many a times people end up spending 15, 20, 30 minutes Extra minutes toll. in the queue, yeah. Now remove that out. So we have to focus on improving productivity everywhere. The whole of Mumbai is in metro construction. Mm. Our average speed of metro construction is 25 kilometers per year. In China, it is 300 kilometers per year. So effectively, the work done in Mumbai over 12 years, China is doing it in one year. Now, we can't you know, copy China, but we have seen in Delhi in Commonwealth Games when there was a deadline, the whole of India ha, worked. Yeah. So we have to get a yeah. good Xerox machine. Delhi was unrecognizable. Put, yeah. put Mr. Sridharan over there, take 12 Xerox copy and give him 12 cities to complete the You're metro. You're not saying Sheila Dixit, huh? You're only yeah. giving this but, you know, what Sheila they, Even Sheila Dixit, whosoever yeah. okay. is responsible. So we've, we've been prescriptive. What we are doing is that we're trying to be prescriptive. But let's be predictive. Kya hoga? You know, on the subject the of that, really I, I just want to quickly take it across to Purinju because Purinju, there is also chatter in the market that a wealth tax, inheritance tax, something is coming on those lines. That definitely will not be taken well by the markets or by you, perhaps. You won't like that, would you? I don't know. This, I don't think that's a small uh, taxation or, you know, a concession given. Uh, may not impact the market as it is. Because as I told you, market is at a very, uh, you know, in a, in a low sentiment, uh, It's there is a fear factor. Basically, investors are scared, uh, Aisha, uh, unlike never before. You know, the, it's like uh, a mind feels everywhere, the land mines, especially in the, in the uh, other than the top uh, uh, 30, 50 companies, the, it's like mind feels. We don't know which company, when is, uh, when are things coming out? about a default, auditor not signing, uh, you know, th there are so many of problems uh, and, uh, and the corporate governance issues across the board. Now, many of the earlier problems are coming out now and uh, we have gone through that pain. So we are at a situation, I think it's uh, absolutely at the bottom of the market sentiment. So none of these uh, uh, tax provisions can make it further down, in my opinion. So things can only improve from here. In a, with a uh, broader market I, I'm, a view I'm talking about. Uh, right, Pranjo, fair point.
Dilesh, for a minute, let's hypothetically imagine there was no budget today. Then what happens to the market? The market will focus on fundamentals with budget, without budget. And fundamentals are not looking great. Fundamentals are not looking great, but there is always hope. And market always tries to discount future. So we have gone through a transition where liquidity was tight, rates were high. This were being used to control inflation, improve fiscal balance. Valuation was also high in Jan 2018. Now today we have a scenario where compared to last year's budget, large caps are up 10% but small caps are down 28%. So valuations are reasonable, liquidity is improving, rates are being cut and PSU banks could be capitalized with reserve transfer or otherwise. There could be pickup in the economic activity. Two worries which we had on the side, oil and monsoon. Now monsoon seems to be progressing well. And if July and August rains are good, one could see pickup in the rural economy. Despite US-Iran skirmishes, oil has remained on the softer side. And let's assume that oil remains soft, automatically economy benefits. So I think the small and mid caps will start looking at the hope. Small and mid caps will discount the recovery. And that should be a good space to be in at this point of time. So if you have to start a SIP, will you start in an index fund? equity diversified or a small cap and that three. I'm not getting there. All three. Somebody has a compulsion. Multi-caps. Multi-caps. So if you are a conservative guy, you can start in multi-cap. If you are aggressive guy, put it into small and mid-cap. Asha, even on budget day, we are talking about SIPs because that ultimately really matters for a large part of our viewers. Exactly. That budgets will come and go, but it is important to stick to your financial discipline. So let's not lose sight of our channel messaging. Yes, budget could be a one-day event, Yeah. two-day yeah. adjustment one week action but ultimately what will create wealth is not to guess what will come in the budget but understand the bent of the economy and are you sticking to a financial and, economy and understand the benefits of disciplined investment exactly. I guess that is what SIPs are but you know on the point of budget since it is budget day nonetheless uh, Nilesh how do you think the budget will address the stress in the financial sector particularly so the f stress in the financial sector when we talk about mm. there are different aspects to it in PSU Bank, it is lack of availability of capital. Yeah. Now, there is a reasonable hope that it will be met out of RBI's excess reserve via Dr. Bimal Jalan committee report. Sure. Now, since we don't know what that report will contain, it's unfair to assume that in budget there could be provision for capitalizing PSU Bank. The second is the NBFC scenario where clearly there are some NBFCs which are coming under pressure. Now, one is ALM mismatch which can be managed by RBI by providing liquidity by if there is a need to create a special window for NBFC but the second is the underlying stress of the NBFC sector which is real estate sector so my feeling is that in this budget there could be some provisions I mean one provision which I will recommend government sure. to consider in the past if a person bought second house mm. he was able to get deduction of interest paid from his income mm. and that pushed many salaried people, many businessmen to go for second house. Mm. Now that exemption was taken away. That is taken away the demand. Kindly reintroduce that section that will immediately create demand for real estate sector. As the real estate starts moving, NBFC ka other stress disappear ho jayega. Okay. So this is how you will have to go to a root cause analysis to solve the problem. Go oh, micro and macro will Absolutely. automatically get sorted. You don't need anything sorted. grand or big, Aisha. You stick to just very basic things as to how can you pick up the leakages, make life easy for an entrepreneur who genuinely wants to invest, capitalize the bank, kickstart the lending activity. I think we are in a great space given what the global backdrop is because mm. we may argue about trade war on a daily basis on the channels, but frankly, we are the one who will be the biggest beneficiary of trade True. war given that, you know, it's a war between the Europeans and the Chinese the mighties, and the Chinese yeah. and the Americans. Okay, ABBA is standing on the wall and ABBA, we are off to a good start, but on the budget day, 